In the previous lecture, we were talking about how we want to approximate the solution of partial differential equations. And uh, the solution that we ultimately settled on, at least for functions of one variable, is that we should be using piecewise polynomial approximation. So in the way you should think about this in the lowest order case is piecewise linears. So these are sort of line segments that uh, you connect. And um, we convinced ourselves that these are pretty decent ways of approximating functions, in particular in cases where um, these functions are not smooth. So they could have, let's say, uh, singularities, like they can go to infinity, or maybe they have a cusp, so the function stays finite, but the derivative becomes infinite. And we argued that this is sort of the, the right approach to this problem because the solutions to partial differential equations are not always smooth. We think of them as being smooth, but the reality is that they are not always. And so these global approximation uh, ways that we often tend to think about, let's say like a high order Taylor series or a Fourier series with sines and cosines, these approaches don't typically work very well. Uh, whereas the piecewise polynomial approximation is something that we convinced ourselves if we just make these intervals small and small enough, then um, we can approximate the function that we um, try to, um, th that solves the partial differential equation. We can approximate these functions arbitrarily well, right? So we, if we just put enough work into the problem, so if we allow ourselves to use enough of these small intervals, then eventually we can make the error as small as we want. So for this lecture, I would like to show you how you would generalize this to the case of uh, two-dimensional and three-dimensional problems, because of course the world consists of uh, two and three-dimensional problems. The world around me is a three-dimensional space. If I look at, uh, let's say, the surface of the Earth outside my window here, then that is uh, a two-dimensional object. And uh, so many processes in the world, of course, are described by uh, partial differential equations in two or three independent variables x, y, or x, y, and z. And so the question is, how do you generalize this sort of piecewise line segment thing? How do you generalize this to 2D and 3D cases? So let me walk you through this. This is, um, of course, lecture 3.92, and I'm going to show you how to do piecewise polynomial approximation in 2D and 3D. So just to remind you, um, the way we wanted to do this um, for one dimension is that we split the domain of a function. So these are, in for, for a one-dimensional case, these are all of the x's for which the function is defined. Um, we split those into um, small intervals, and then on each interval we define a linear function, or if you want to, um, a, a polynomial. But the point is that it's a polynomial, um, on each individual um, line segment and then we make this so that for example um, the polynomial at the, uh, or th that the polynomial at the left and at the right of each one of these nodes um, have the same value in other words that we end up with a piecewise polynomial function that is continuous and if you compare the picture on the left and the picture on the right, then it makes perfect sense to believe that um, if I allow myself more subintervals, then the approximation becomes better. Where maybe a better way of phrasing this is if I make the length of each one of these subintervals smaller and smaller, then the approximation becomes better. So it's not just about having a million intervals sort of clustered all the way over to the right but leaving them big on the left, that's not going to help. But if I make the maximum length of these intervals smaller, then I will get a better approximation. So in this um, picture here, the purple functions in both of these pictures are um, the approximation and the green function is the one that I want to approximate. And it's quite obvious to see that the purple one becomes a better approximation to the green one if I allow myself twice as many intervals, which I do on the right compared to the left. So in 2D, I want to come up with a similar approach to this. And the way this works is that, again, I consider the domain of the function. So this is now all of the x1, x2, or xy values for which this function is defined. So that's my domain. And I'm going to split it into something that we call cells. Um, you're going to see a picture on, um, on the next page, but um, the point is a, a cell is um, sort of um, a simple geometric object, let's say, for example, a triangle. 
And then on each one of these triangles, I'm going to define my function as um, the function that I want to approximate the solution of the PDE with. I'm going to define this as, for example, linear. And um, I'm going to then make it so that um, at the interfaces between two triangles, I want the solution, I want this function to be continuous. And it is not difficult to see, of course, that if you make the cells smaller, you again get a better approximation. So here's an example. Um, I, uh, my domain in this case is sort of this, this ring, uh, let's say in annulus, and I've split it into triangles. And um, together we call this collection of cells the mesh, or I'm going to introduce another term later on, it's called a triangulation. The triangulation is, or a mesh, is fundamentally a subdivision of the domain into, um, into cells. And each one of the triangles that you see in this picture is one cell. So here's a slightly coarser version, um, so with bigger triangles. Um, if I want to define a piecewise linear function on this, um, so I'm, in this case I used um, the function x squared, um, plus zero times y squared, so it's a function that depends only on one of the two independent variables. Um, I um, make this function so that it is linear on each one of these triangles, um, and then I make it also so that it is continuous between two triangles. And so the approximation of the function x squared, that is a piecewise linear, this is what I'm showing you here. I can do this with triangles, like I show here. Um, I can also do this with something that is called quadrilaterals. So quadrilaterals literally means four-sided object. Um, so quadri four, lateral is the side. And um, so you th should think of quadrilaterals as um, sort of deformed squares or rectangles. And um, I can, of course, also subdivide my domain, namely this ring, this annulus, into quadrilaterals and then I can again define a piecewise polynomial function on uh, this domain that is polynomial on each cell and that would look like this. Um, so these functions are not necessarily linear anymore but they are what we call bilinear and for the moment maybe the difference is not um, of importance. Um, bi in this case means it is linear in x and in y separately. So um, Again, I have a function that is continuous um, that I get out of this approximation and it approximates the function x squared. And of course, it is not exactly equal the function x squared. You can see that this um, surface that I plot here has kinks and creases, but it is not very difficult to um, believe that if I make these cells smaller and smaller and smaller, that I um, can make the approximation about as good as I want. So this is the case in 2D. I split the domain um, into a set of uh, cells. Um, on each cell, um, that could be a triangle or a quadrilateral, I define a piecewise function, for example, linear, like I showed you, or it could, of course, be a higher order polynomial. Um, this is what I do in 2D, and in 3D, I do fundamentally the same thing. I take my domain, which is now a subset of R3, split it into cells. These cells can now be tetrahedra, hexahedra, pyramids and prisms. I'm going to show you the first two of these in a second. And then I define a piecewise function on each one of these, um, or on this, on this subdivision into cells. That means that the function is either linear or polynomial on each cell. So um, the choices that you have in three dimensions is I can define um, the mesh as a collection of tetrahedra. So a tetrahedron is a, um, a four-sided cell. So here, hedron um, or tetrahedron means four uh, faces. A uh, so a the, the term hedron corresponds to a, the side, a face of a cell. So it is a four-sided um, object. And um, so in this case, what I did is I took sort of a um, a shell, a, a round, um, a, a part of a circle or of a, uh, of a ball. I cut the middle out and then I give you only half of it. Um, so I think about it as a bowl. And I divided that into tetrahedra. And I can do the same thing into hexahedra. So hexahedra are uh, six-sided um, objects and they are the equivalent of a deformed cube, for example.
Um, and so you get the idea. I can do one or the other. Um, it doesn't matter very much. And then um, sometimes we can also have meshes that consist of combinations, some tetrahedra, some hexahedra. And if you want to mix them, then typically you also need other shapes like pyramids and wedges, for example. But maybe that's not all that important. The point is that I'm going to define my mesh as a um, the domain subdivided into cells and on each cell I then define my uh, function as piecewise linear or piecewise polynomial. So the examples that I showed you were um, uh, used a linear approximation. Uh, that means that the polynomial is linear on each cell or bilinear in the case of quadrilaterals or trilinear in the case of hexahedra. And uh, with a little bit of work, it is extendable to higher polynomial order. So when we say higher order, we mean higher polynomial degree. Um, so for example, the function could be piecewise quadratic or piecewise cubic. And um, then we say that on each interval, the, the approximation is uh, linear, quadratic, and cubic. And to introduce it, just a little bit of notation. So typically, um, when we say that we use a linear approximation on triangles or tetrahedra, we often also use the term P1. So P1 means it is a polynomial of degree 1. And when it is quadratic, then we use P2. So P1 and P2 are the spaces of, or the sets of all piecewise linear and piecewise quadratic functions on triangles and tetrahedra. And if you want to do the same thing on quadrilaterals and hexahedra, then um, these functions are not individually linear. They are not, yeah, these functions are not individually linear, but they are linear in X and linear in Y, but they can, for example, have terms like X times Y. And so we use um, the terms uh, notation Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 for um, polynomials of um, degree 1, 2, 3, and 4 on quads, uh, quadrilaterals, and in hexahedra. And in 1D, of course, there is no difference. And in that case, um, so the P1 space in 1D and the Q1 space in 1D would also be the same. So. If you do this, if you take a function f um, that you want to approximate with a piecewise function of polynomial degree p, and you say that um, this approximation, I'm going to call it fhp, where h is the diameter of the largest cell. So in 1D, that was sort of the length of the longest interval. And in 2D and 3D, it's the diameter of these cells. If I do this, then I can prove the following, that if you take the difference between the function that I want to approximate and its piecewise polynomial degree, then this is less than or equal in this norm, so defined here, um, some constant divided by p factorial. And the important part is that there is this h to the p plus 1 over there. And that means that if I make h small, I can always drive that difference between f and fhp to zero, right? So in other words, if I make the size of the cells small enough, or if I allow myself enough work, if I put in enough work, then I can always make um, the error as small as I want. And I can also do this um, for the gradient, for the derivative of these functions. So the derivative of f and the derivative of this fhp, they, uh, that difference also becomes smaller. So the last thing that I would like to talk about real quick is um, there is a, um, a notation, a terminology that we often use. So we say that we split these cells, the, split the domain into cells. And in 1D, these cells are intervals. In 2D, they are either triangles or quadrilaterals. In 3D, they are tetrahedra, hexahedra, pyramids or prisms. We call this collection of cells a mesh, but we also use the term triangulation. And um, that might be confusing, of course, in the beginning, because the triangulation suggests that we subdivide the domain into triangles. That is not always true. In, tr in 3D, for example, you cannot divide a domain into triangles. You can subdivide it into tetrahedra, for example, but not into triangles. But we use that term anyway. Um, so triangulation today is, is, think of it as a technical term that is used in specific contexts 
and has been divorced from the origin of the word. Um, so triangulation can also be used in 1D and 3D, and it can be used in 2D if we use quadrilaterals. It is used in 3D for tetrahedra and for hexahedra. So when you hear triangulation, think mesh, don't think triangles. So just to sum this all up, so the equivalent of this sort of piecewise linear approximation that we do in, um, in 1D is that in 2D um, and in 3D we subdivide the domain into a mesh of cells and then we do a polynomial approximation on each cell and that gives us a piecewise polynomial approximation and um, the theorem that I showed you at the end there was that if we make the cells small so if we make this the h small h being the diameter of the largest triangle for example if we make h small we can make the difference between the original function and its approximation as small as we want and um, the important part of course is this is not true for any function uh, i can think of functions that are um, very rough let's say a function that is zero for all real function for e all real x's and one for all um, sorry, zero for all rational x's and one for all irrational ones. So for these ones, you cannot approximate at all. But for all of the functions within the class we care about, we can approximate functions well through this sort of piecewise polynomial approximation approach that we discussed. And so this is the key idea behind the finite element method, namely that we can approximate functions with piecewise polynomials.